While the concept of value at risk, or VAR, may seem complicated at first, it really is not that bad. So let's start with a formal definition. The potential loss in value of a risky portfolio or asset given a specified time period and confidence level. So what we're trying to find, the output is the potential loss, and the variables we're using as the input is time period and confidence level. So here I've mapped out a basic VAR scenario. Remember in the previous uh, definition, we said we needed a time horizon and we needed a confidence interval. So we're saying our time horizon is one year, our confidence interval is 95%. When you have a standard normal distribution and a confidence interval of 95%, you could look up on any Z-score table and you'd find that the Z-score is 1.65. Now we're assuming a mean expected return of 1%. So over this one year time period, we're expecting a 1% return. And this gives us a standard deviation of 1%. So here you can see that we have a dotted green line at 1%. That's our mean, that's our expected return. But we're trying to find the tail risk. We're trying to find at 95% confidence interval what may what might we lose okay so here's our var formula mean minus z score times standard deviation see this is a very simple concept now let's just plug in the numbers one percent is the mean minus a z score of 1.65 and then we're going to multiply it by a standard deviation of one percent this gives us a var equal to negative 0.65 percent now we can go up here and find it would probably be about right at this spot. So we're finding our tail risk is right here, okay? So outside of our 95% confidence interval, we would have losses greater than that. But at the 95% confidence interval, we expect our loss to be at about where this black line is. If we were to change our confidence interval, you can see how this would change our outcome, right? So Let's say instead of a 95%, we use a 99%. With the 99%, our Z-score is now 2.33. And then, so if we change our Z-score to 2.33, I'm kind of out of room here. Assume I'm writing 2.33 there. Then it ends up being 1% minus negative 2.33%, which would give us a negative one33 3%. And then we would actually find at a 99% confidence interval, our loss, our tail loss might be here. So we're going further into the tail when our confidence interval increases. Now let's talk about the three primary ways to estimate VAR. The first one is the parametric method, also known as the variance covariance method. This is Basically, what we just did on the previous screen, you assume a certain mean, and then you assume a certain standard deviation and distribution, and then you just calculate VAR based on those inputs. Basically, what we did on this last screen. Um, and then the second method is the historical method. I think this one is honestly the easiest one to understand. So let's just assume you want to find VAR for a 100 day time period. You're gonna go look at, let's say, the previous 100 days. Each of those days has a specific return. If I wanna find, you know, the 5% 5% VAR, the potential loss at 5%, the 5% level, then I'll just take all 100 days, sort them in order of magnitude, and then go find Go all the way to the bottom and find the fifth worst day and just say, that is my VAR. It's very simple. Um, and then the third way to calculate VAR is to use a Monte Carlo simulation. So what this would be is, let's say you define your parameters of what you're kind of, what, what you're expecting maybe for mean, standard uh, deviation, and kind of your return distribution. And then you would say, I'm going to do and 1,000 simulations using my computer. And then after I do these 1,000 simulations, they're all gonna give me a certain um, return expectation. And I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna find the certain percentile return of that whole simulation uh, that I specified in my VAR assumptions. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and drop a like.